Hello everybody, and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. As you know, um, actually before I say anything else, I'm sorry if the audio or my voice sounds a little bit weird in this one. I'm coming down for with a slight cold, um, and it kind of sucks because it's the middle of summer. As you know, I really enjoy clouds, so we're going to talk about clouds again today. As we know from, if you haven't seen my tutorial on animating clouds in Houdini, I recommend checking that out before viewing this one because I talk a little bit about the theory we applied in that lesson, uh, but I'll go over it again. There are about three main sections of the clouds you should know about, high clouds, mid-level clouds, and low clouds. There's also vertical displacement clouds with clouds that stretch in between those three layers, um, but we're not going to talk too much about those ones for this lesson. Um, so I thought maybe it would be interesting to make a cloudscape together. Um, already I have my file set up, so we'll just kind of go through it together. Um, I've also created some different clouds, so some cloud varieties. Some interesting ones like Lendiker, which are your UFO clouds that people actually do mistake for UFOs. Um, as you can see here, they form some very beautiful coloration on top of mountains. Um, but yeah, people do mistake them for UFOs, but yeah, uh, due to the way they're formed and the way the air presses against the mountain range and gets forced up into the sky, it creates this freezing effect which are these clouds. So there are some different ones that I also have created. You can get the overlap of them like this, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, we're going to focus on making a, ma a cloudscape that has fairly accurate clouds to the sky, and we're going to layer them. The one I enjoy the most is this one. Uh, when I was in an airplane a couple months back, I was coming back from the Bahamas. Our, our plane was landing, and it was sunset, and we were coming through these clouds. The way the sunlight was refracting out for them because of the sunset it was like a big giant rainbow cloud and it was beautiful. Um, it looks like you were flying through a rainbow. And I, ever since then, I've really enjoyed this type of cloud. So these clouds can stretch from all different types of levels. They form like a very, I would say like maybe an I, capital I silhouette in the sky. Um, so I use them a lot in cloudscapes. Um, I built this one. And for all intents and purposes, I put my geo in a different node than my clouds because I was just mass building clouds for this cloudscape that I'm building. I used a lot of noise fields as well. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of points and I scattered a lot of geometry because I couldn't actually create these clouds in any other way than just scattering geometry and randomizing attributes and using ISO offset to scatter points into the density of it. Uh, but yeah, that's how I created this one is probably a little bit more challenging than other clouds such as Cirrus uh, We'll take a look at Cirrus right now uh, Cirrus is a very high cloud If she forms <laughs> uh, So people look up and they'll see what they call mares tails or like you would usually see these on a bright sunny day as well as probably this one as well cumulus I think Yeah, so they're like Light fluffy dots, but they're very higher in the atmosphere, um, and their density is very low. And Cirrostratus, you get more of a curved kind of contrail effect. These are not contrails, but they do look like and resemble them. Um, for these two in particular, I used a pop network, and we're going to look at Cirrus of how I did that. I'm just going to turn off my cloud. So building clouds, you can use anything from pop networks to vo uh, <laughs> volumes, but when you're creating the geometry for the cloud, you always have to reconvert it to an, a geom closed geometry, otherwise it probably won't work. So in this case, what I did is I had a grid, I scattered some points, and if we go inside, you can see the forces that I use, and I'll just lightly skim over them. Um, there we go. I didn't really do anything in the pop solver. Um, and then I trailed them, which is nice. Um, and then I frame held it at frame held it and time blended it at a frame that I enjoyed. So it's stuck at 
187 for now because I wanted in this case while building a cloudscape static clouds um, yeah so today's lesson I will now say this is a static cloudscape if you want to animate your cloudscape go check out my animating cloud tutorial so and then I reconverted uh, converted it to a VDB and then reconverted it to polygons uh, the only challenge while making that cloud was the thickness of the streaks, cloud streaks, because um, if the geometry was too thin, then the cloud sop was not picking it up. So just be wary of that. Let's start. So circum is Billy, 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 Billy boy. Um, we're gonna add him in, and then yeah, we'll use you. Wait, are you upside down? Yes, you are. <laughs> Fun thing about modeling clouds in Houdini, and somebody pointed this out to me when I was doing something else, is that clouds can be over 10 kilometers big. big. If you ever go out in the sky, uh, out, I mean out in the real world away from your computer, and you put your arm up, um, your arm up to the sky, so the length from your wrist to your elbow, and you measure clouds like that, um, that's one kilometer in clouds. Clouds can be anywhere from one kilometer or smaller to over 10 kilometers, so they're massive. So when you're modeling them in Houdini, the scale can be a bit of an issue, and just keep that in mind. It's not very apparent because of how big clouds can be, but just be aware of that. Overlap your clouds, I think, and cloudscapes are also very good because of the way the light refracts through them. Um, So yeah, I think maybe I'll add these in. But yeah, keep your high clouds high and keep your low clouds low, and then your cloudscape will probably be all right. Um, so I'm gonna place my camera here just for the fun. Um, maybe move these boys over here a little bit. There we go. Uh, maybe, over, maybe move them up a little bit more. I don't really want to rescale my geometry swap. I might have to though. I'll just do a 1.1. So let's move on to our mid-level clouds. So I'm going to turn all these off for now so we can see our mid-level clouds. We have got our auto cumulus. And those ones were pretty easy. They were just like geometry scattered on a grid. Copy to points, pretty basic. As well as this one. I think this one was a tube. Yes, it was a tube. Um, geometry for it kind of look like that. So I'm going to go back to my camera and I'm going to turn on my clouds. I kind of like how that's already appearing out of the clouds in the distance, but I'm going to drop it a little bit because it is mid-level. And auto cumulus. I'm probably going to make a little bit lower. So if you have a fluffy ground of clouds. Um let me put this at four. So we have that. And if you were rendering this as a still, you could definitely put different clouds in the background and then maybe have a sunset and then just refract the light off your clouds. I'll probably post something later where I do a cloudscape like this and um, just kind of do a pan camera pan through it. Um, but I'll probably do most of that work in Nuke. So already we have a great mid-level high cloudscape. Um, but what if we wanted to do a mid-level to low cloudscape? Then we I don't want to cut all these out, minus these guys. So I'm going to also shut these off for now and then show you some low clouds. 
or Stratus are your big fluffy. Nope. <laughs> uh, I confuse that with cumulus. Um, the this one looks like fog, but it's not fog. If you've ever seen a cloud not touch the ground, but it, fog that doesn't touch the ground, so it's above you, but it doesn't touch the. This would be that, so it'd be just kind of floating in the air a bit. I'm not gonna use too much of that one. Uh, so cumulus is your big poofy cartoon cloud, and stratocumulus, somewhat similar, similar to our alto cumulus in the sense that and our, our alto stratus but it has kind of less of names than that one um so yeah let's layer these so let's keep in mind and i'm going to turn off my low clouds for now that i might rotate this a little bit so let's see if we were looking down through our clouds. So let's put our camera here. We have a nice view of that. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the lendier clouds because we don't have any mountains in our scene, but I might play with these guys. Okay, where are you, boy? Yeah. So we're going to drop him and maybe put him down there somewhere. And maybe rotate him a little bit. But I mean, if I was rendering this in Nuke, I'd probably render a lot of these clouds as different passes. So I could add motion blur, or I could add regular blur and depth of field separately. Um, but yeah, but in, for these purposes in Houdini, we don't really need to do much. So I might scale that up a little bit. Um, on the Z axis. Thick blanket of cloud. Maybe we'll pet you out a little bit. Where are you, buddy? Make you a little bit lower. And put you up to a three. Down on cam two. There. But yeah, that would be our low cloudscape if you were in the sky. And just already looking at it from a different angle. If you were going to do a camera pan through clouds, that's maybe how you would do it. Um, let's look at our trans... this boy? Maybe he's going to add a little bit more variety to our scene. Probably not a lot. But already we have some nice cloud cover. Um, and we have our clouds that are closer to our camera and clouds that are farther away from our camera. So that would be a low cloudscape in this sense. Make sense? Awesome. So I'm just going to briefly touch on the cloud varieties. So I'm going to turn all these boys off. So these guys, who's here a bit wavy, um, this is what they look like in real life. They're overcast, they're very thick, you don't see too much light getting pushed through them. But yeah, you can see some nice variation. And then mostly, all I had to do with this one was scatter some more points on a grid. And that was it. <laughs> this guy, and we'll let him in a second. It's a little bit more poofy. He was formed in the same way, but I just kind of smoothed out the noise and the cloud noise. So I cranked up the elements size and created a more poofy effect. Now you may have heard of this cloud and it's actually a very rare cloud formation to see in the sky. It's called the Kevin Holmitz wave. Sometimes you actually see this in fluid simulations, not just actually in the sky. Um, but because the sky contains water particles and air particles moving and colliding together, sometimes these formations will occur. So let's look up. Yeah, 
there we go. These are real. This happens <laughs> mostly over bodies of water, but yep, they are real cloud formations and they're waves. So what I did for that, I just applied geometry and I twisted the sphere into a wave and scattered it to some points. Um, and that created our Kevin Holmes. So regularly put that in a cloudscape, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, and that's basically our breakdown on a cloudscape uh, made with high, mid-level, and low clouds. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. My name is Kate. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.